To make it easy for people to enter data in Excel, you can create drop-down lists of items. In this cell, we have a list of weekdays. I can click on that arrow, click on a weekday, and it fills in the cell. The same thing for months. Here's a list. I can't see all of the months, so it only shows eight items at a time, but I can scroll down and click on December, and that's in the cell. Those lists are on another worksheet, so I've just typed the days here and the months here, and then use data validation, which you can find on the data tab to set that up. There are a few limitations though. If we look at the list, the font is very small and you can't change it. It's not too bad here at 100% zoom, but if you start going down to lower zoom levels so that you can see more of your worksheet, it might be hard or almost impossible to read these lists. And as we saw for the months, you can only see eight items at a time. It's not too bad here because we only have 12 months, but for a longer list, you might need to do quite a bit of scrolling up and down to find items. This doesn't auto-complete. Data validation doesn't help you fill in the word. Excel might help you if it can copy something that you've already entered above, but the data validation itself won't help me type January. If I start typing, I have to fill in the whole word and move on to the next cell. So data validation is helpful, but I've come up with a workaround that you can download on my website and it uses a combo box over cells that have a data validation dropdown. In this corner, hidden away is a little combo box and it pops up over a cell when you double click on it. So if I double click here, the combo box comes out of hiding, goes over this cell and picks up the same data validation list that the cell uses. So when I click the arrow, I'll see the list of weekdays. I can click on one, press enter to go to the next cell. I'll double click again. And for this one, I could start typing T and it fills in Tuesday. But if I wanted Thursday, I'll type an H and then press enter. So it helps with the typing. And if we look at the months, I've changed the number of rows that show so we can see 12. So you can adjust that setting as well as the font size and select, and again here we can type. So if I want to type August, just have to type two letters and it's filled in for me. To see the combo box, I'm going to double click on a cell and then go to the developer tab on the ribbon and there's a design mode button. When I click that, I'm able to make changes to that combo box. I can click on the properties button and here are all the things you could change about that combo box. So you get a lot more control over it than you have over data validation. So you could come down here and go to the font. Instead of Arial font, you could change the font and the font size to whatever suits you. And here's where I changed the list rows. This is 12. You could make that a larger number. You'd want to pick a number that's going to fit on the screen. You don't want anything that's too huge, but you can adjust that setting. And then when you're done making changes, turn off design mode and you're ready to go again. So if you download the sample file from my website, you'd be able to copy it all into your workbook, copy the combo box and the code onto the worksheet. So if I right click and view code, you'll see that there's code that runs when you double click the cell. You don't have to understand all this code, you would just have to get it into your workbook. For more Excel tips and tutorials, and to download the sample file for this video, please visit my Contextures website at www.contextures.com.